Aloha, welcome to Life Journaling in Dash for the 16th of September, the year is 2022. We're your hosts, David and Yuvella. And today we are looking at lots of construction happening. <laughs> We've been this way all week. We've decided we're happy for people who got building permits. We're still praying for ours. But today we will be reading Ezekiel 40, 41, Psalms 128, and Revelation 21. And I'm giving it the title, Fear and Follow. And we'll explain that in a moment. But there, could you open us with a big word of prayer? Lord, you are awesome. You are wonderful. Um, it is the first time in my life that I've lived in a city. And I'm not quite there with all the noises that go on. But Lord, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, with the noise that we hear means that there are people out there who are working and you're providing for them. We thank you, Lord, for uh, everything that you do for us, and we thank you for the opportunity to share your word with others. May our words encourage others. Amen. Amen. As someone thanked us before for the production value, that the time and energy that's put into this production, and I said, we hit the record button. Now, we do put a lot of time and thought into our journaling, journaling but the recording aspect, because it happens each and every day, Sometimes it's quiet and sometimes it's not so quiet. I do have to say we live on the 10th floor in our um, condo. No mosquitoes. And so we do go and look out the window here to see if there's any possible noise going on. But of course, they drive up while we start. <laughs> <laughs> and then the noise starts or the ambulance goes by. Or the motorcycle but anyhow we don't we don't fear the noisemakers we fear and follow god and on that do you want to tell us what you've read what, yes yes the title is fear and follow okay <laughs> and i'm pulling from psalms chapter 128 verses 1 and 2 today where it says blessed are all who fear the lord who walk in obedience to him you will eat the fruit of your labor blessings and prosperity will be yours my observation what it means this encouragement comes from psalms and tells us that if we fear and honor god we will be blessed and people under our roof relatives and people under our roof will be blessed too application or how will i be made differently by what i've read or what i've listened to today well i'm encouraged that following god's ways are important and the right thing to do toby mack sings a song with kurt franklin and medisa called lose my soul i love the song because it asks the question what good would it do to gain the whole world but lose my soul i believe it is important to ask the question what do we want our life story to tell i want to hear when i'm done with my life be it later today or many years from now well done my good and faithful servant I want to be blessed because I feared God and walked in obedience to him. That I saw fruit of people coming into their own relationship with Jesus because of my labor, what I've been used to do, and um, how I was used by God. My prayer, Lord, thank you for the reminder to fear and follow you. Help me to quickly see when I must make changes in my own life to avoid drifting away from your righteous path. Amen. Excellent. And then yesterday we were talking about if you want to praise the Lord, but you're not for sure what to do, just go and read the Psalms. And cool. Yeah, it's encouraging. It's very encouraging. Especially if people go through a situation and there's a lot of weightiness on their brain and their mind and they can't get any rest. It's a great thing to go back and listen to Psalms or read Psalms because it focuses on God and your relationship. So it allows you to kind of clear your head of bad thoughts, put fresh thoughts that are good and righteous in your mind, and then you get some peace because you're very close to God. What did you journal on today? Well, I took from the other two places that we read, from Ezekiel 40, verse four, the man said to me, Son of man, look carefully and listen closely and pay attention to everything I am going to show you. For that is why you have been brought here. Tell the people of Israel everything you see. And then in Revelation 21 verses 3 and 4, 
And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. My observation. Rick Warren wrote a book a while back called A Purpose Driven Life. Now, I have to be honest and say I only read a few pages, but the title has stuck with me over the years. In Ezekiel 40, verse 4, I feel like God is giving every Christian a purpose. He tells us to pay attention at what we are learning through reading the Bible, listening to pastors, and the grace we are experiencing in life. We are to tell others. Then in Revelation, he adds what we are to tell people, some more information. That when we are dead, we who have accepted Jesus as our Savior will spend eternity living with God. At this time, we will experience no more death, no more sorrow, and no more pain. I watched a mentor explain eternity to me, eternity to me this way. He said, if I drew a line from here to across a room, and that represented eternity, and I put a small tiny dot on that line, that would be your life. In fact, the dot would probably be much larger than your actual life. So whatever I experience in life is mi min min minuscule. Thank you. And it's a scratch on the line. Compared to eternity, I need to keep my eyes on the end reward, which is to spend eternity with God. And as Ezekiel said, I need to share that with others. My prayer, I'm sorry, that was, I'm not there, that was just my observation. Now my application. <laughs> it's all good. How will I be changed by what I read today? First, I'm reminded again that I need to tell others about God. Second, my desires are minuscule compared to eternity. What if God does not answer my prayers? Does that mean that I get upset and question him? As I was listening and reading today's scriptures, I was getting confused with all the measurings and descriptions in Ezekiel. I cannot grasp all of Revelation, and then the thought just dropped in my mind. So what? Just because I cannot comprehend does not mean they are not true. Just because I do not understand does not mean I don't read it. Life with God is like this. Just because he does not answer my prayers the way I thought he would, just because he waits and answers prayers in his timing, just because he leads me in paths that I did not expect, does not mean I do not trust him or I throw my hands up and say I quit. I humbly say, I do not understand. I do not see where we are going, but my desire with all my whole heart is to follow your lead. May your will be done in my life. Another mentor just said, our life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% of our reaction to what happens to us. My prayer, Lord, thank you for reminding me that I do not have to understand or comprehend everything I read in the Bible and everything that happens to me. Thank you for reminding me of what a pastor told me once. Faith is living in advance of what we only are understanding in reverse. I do not question the events in my life anymore, and I do not fret when I cannot comprehend parts of the Bible. With the Holy Spirit's help, I will live in faith with you, knowing that you have everything under control. Thank you. Amen. Very good. Very good. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at Ezekiel chapter 42, 43, and 44. We'll also be looking at Psalm chapter 122 and Revelation chapter 22. Then I'll close this out with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much uh, for everything. I'm going to ask you to help us with our building permits because it's been a long time coming and the sound that we hear in the background just reminds us that we don't have ours, but that somebody's getting them and that through you all things are possible. We ask you to guide us and protect us. Amen. Amen.